Good Monday morning. The College AP rankings came out Sunday afternoon. So we're going to take a look at uh, what the changes are, who's moving, who dropped out, all of those usual questions that we would have on a Monday morning following that ranking. However, I do want to give you just one food for thought today. I'm not going to highlight it. I might make another video about it as we go on here. But we had two teams on the top four this week who won with last second field goals against unranked opponents. Now, when this happened in September, uh, the number one Alabama Crimson Tide uh, won by just a last second field goal against the Texas Longhorns who were unranked. And they fell from number one to number three. This week, we had Michigan and TCU both run out on the field for last second field goals. TCU doing it with time running on the clock and kicked more or less emergency game winning field goals to win. Now they stayed in the top four of this uh, calendar. Just further proof that games in September have a lot, uh, are weighted way differently than necessarily games in November. I call it out as a little bit of hypocrisy. I just don't think that should be the case. Here's our top 25 from last week, according to the Associated Press. What's really interesting here is we look at the losses, we see Tennessee being the highest ranked loss of the week, and is definitely going to cause a little bit of a shuffle up in the top 10. Utah losing to Oregon will create some ripples as well. Uh, some other really big losses, Oklahoma State got blown away by Oklahoma, um, which will force them out as well. So if we start looking at that individually, the loss by Tennessee drops them down to number nine. Utah drops four places to number 14. North Carolina drops five places to number 18 with a Wake Forest loss. Ole Miss drops six places to number 20. UCLA only drops one spot on a one three-point loss to uh, Southern California. UCF, they're the biggest loser of the week. They drop eight spots. And Oklahoma State is out of the top 25. So if we look at that, we'll shuffle up this deck and see where those things all lie. So we've got all of our losers aligned more or less now on the chart. Let's start looking at uh, what, what happens next. So first of all, you've got uh, Oregon State, Cincinnati, and Tulane, all more or less going up some incremental spots with their wins this week. Texas likewise joins the uh, top 25 again. Uh, I really don't know how long these guys stay here. If they didn't have the name Texas, they wouldn't be in the top 25. I mean, I've said repeatedly, if TCU had a burnt orange color, they'd probably be ranked number two by now. Uh, but there again, that's just my opinion coming out. So if we shuffle that up in the bottom row, that looks like this uh, for 19 through 25. Let's look at that second row of 14 through 20. You can see you've got Florida State coming in at 16, Kansas State at 15, Notre Dame at 13, and Washington at 12. Again, let's shuffle that up, and we'll make those come in with the uh, right sequential order. And now that just leaves us with this top 12 environment. And here's where I think things got a little bit interesting as we flow our way through this. Oregon comes up with a, with a number 10 ranking, improving two spots. Penn State is unchanged. Clemson goes up two spots as well to number seven. Alabama, in turn, stays unchanged. USC leapsfrogs um, LSU to number five, which leaves LSU unchanged. And so if we shuffle that all up, we get our top 25 that looks accordingly with one through four unchanged Southern California at number five, LSU unchanged at number six, Clemson up two spots to number seven, Alabama unchanged at eight, Tennessee dropping four slots to number nine, and then <clears throat> Oregon and Penn State at 10 and 11. Honestly, I think this is the most accurate top 10 we've seen in some time. Based on these rankings, looking at the upcoming week, uh, the game that we're all looking for, college game day is going to be at, is the Michigan-Ohio State matchup. And I think the real question here isn't so much who the winner will be, because it really could be either one. Although, again, slight edge to Ohio State for playing at home. I think the question here is going to be, especially if it's close, will that be enough to bump them out of the top four? Uh, and then secondly, even if you look at it from you know, a bigger loss point of view, 
Will a one-loss Michigan or one-loss Ohio State non-conference champion beat out a USC who might be a one-loss Pac-12 champion? We'll see. My, my reading of the CFP priorities would be if they think the two teams are equal, the conference champion should get the edge. So it'll be interesting to see if they keep Michigan or Ohio State ahead of Southern California. Uh, assuming Southern California beats Notre Dame, which is my other matched uh, ranked matchup, uh, we'll get a real insight as to just what that overall level of respect is for Southern California, or if they just flat out think Michigan is better. Again, if they're if they're viewed as the same, and they both would be one loss, it should be one of the tiebreakers is supposed to be conference championship, for which Southern Cal would presumably have the edge. That's all yet to be seen. We've got another week or two to discuss that. Other matchup, you've got Oregon and Oregon State. Uh, for Oregon, they've probably got the Pac-12 championship game on the line. Oregon State just wants to maintain their ranking for the end of the year and secure a good bowl game. Uh, the game is being played in Corvallis, so we'll give just a slight edge there. Overall, though, I do think the Beavers are outmatched. And then you have Tulane and Cincinnati in an American Athletic Conference uh, ranked matchup. All of these should be good games to watch. Looking forward to the weekend.